previous video, we talked about forward bends and protecting the lumbar spine. I wanted to talk about forward bends from a different position, meaning seated, and show some of what you're working with, again, from a different position. We talked about protecting your lumbar spine by not just rounding the low back. For people who have herniated discs in their lumbar spine, it's very bad in a forward bend to have them round their spine. They're essentially putting pressure on the disc to press to the back into a nerve. Generally speaking, not good. You want people to back bend. But we also want to be able to do forward bends and to do them safely, which is why I want to discuss this in the video. When we're having seated forward bends, we have some particular options that make it a bit easier. When you're doing standing forward bends, you're lifting the kneecaps and engaging the quadriceps. The reason that you're slowly lifting the kneecaps, engaging the quadriceps, is that the more you engage the musculature at the front of the thigh, the more vigorously you attempt to lift the kneecaps, the more the hamstrings at the back of the thigh will let go. It's the same thing as your bicep and your tricep. If I contract this muscle, the bicep, the hamstring lengthens. It's the exact same thing. We're just taking advantage of the fact that if we lift the quadriceps, the hamstrings begin to let go. From this position, you can't hyperextend the knees, so it's a little bit more safe. There's not quite as much of a fear factor about hyperextending the knees and hurting them because the knees are already down. The worst that can happen is you pull your ankles up off the ground, and that's as high as they're going to go. Because as you lean forward, you can't push the knees back any further into the ground. Normally what will happen when people do forward bends is they will sit like I'm sitting. And they will immediately round forward doing what? Rounding their lumbar spine. What I have students do is walk themselves forward and then pull the flesh out from their bottom. What I'm doing basically is pulling my tailbone back. I'm rolling my tailbone out behind me so that my sacrum is already lifting up and forward. I can do that several times. I can walk the feet, whatever feels comfortable to me. And what this does is it rolls my pelvis forward so that it's easier for me to come forward without rounding the lumbar spine. Then what I have students do is, again, many students want to touch the toes. It takes a long time for hamstrings to open, to lengthen, to the extent that you can do that. So what I tell students is to simply put their hands on their shins or on their knees. And from here, they put pressure with their hands to lift and to lengthen their spine. You can pull the belly in. So you're lifting, you're rolling the tailbone back. Then as I exhale, I can slowly roll forward, minimizing the pressure on my lumbar spine. And again, big in breath. As I exhale through the nose, I lean forward again. And I'm just maintaining a stretch through the hamstrings. This is the primary focus. We're protecting the lumbar spine. Most people's feet will do this. And they'll roll in. Long term, to get a stretch down the big, long line at the back of the body, from the toes, all the way down and around, forward. What we want to do is pull the toes back, particularly the pinky toes. The feet will tend to roll like this, and I want to roll them this way. One of the ways students can do that easily is by using a strap. And you put it just below the pinky toes. What I'm then going to do is find the distance that feels comfortable to me. So I can be closer to the feet, I can be further away from the feet, you're going to get more of a stretch through the calves. You're going to get a light stretch through the Achilles tendon. You may even feel the sin lines from time massage going out through your feet. Then I take a big in-breath. My tailbone is whirling back. And as I exhale, I slowly round forward. But you're rolling the tailbone back. If it feels like too much pressure on your spine, just lift again. Squeeze the belly in. 
roll forward. This can greatly increase the stretch at the backs of the legs. Just this, if I have students who are very deeply in the pose and I take their feet and roll in this way, they often make a facial expression of it's too much, too much strain. Just because rolling the feet this way increases that line, that stretch down the back of the body. When you've practiced this for a time and you've opened up your lumbar spine, Keep in mind, me shooting this video, I've warmed up before I shot this. Long term, you eventually are able to hold on to the outsides of the feet, pulling the toes back, lengthening that line. You lift the body up on the inhalation, and then slowly, you come down. No force. How does your lumbar spine feel when you do this? If it's too much, you back out. Big in breath and lift, and as you exhale, you slowly come down. You're looking out towards your big toes. That's where you're trying to get your forehead. You're trying to reach your way down. You breathe. And maybe you get to the point where you can clasp. But again, you minimize pressure on the lumbar spine. You take it slow, you take it light, you take it easy. Hips and hamstrings in Westerners are notoriously the most tight areas. When you start doing yoga, you're probably going to be sore there. Just let it take its course, take your time, go slow. Be mindful of your body. The depth that you achieve in the poses is not as important as your state of mind while you're in the pose. I'll see you again soon on RobertGardnerWellness.com.